Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I wanted to go over project three in detail because it is confusing. I think you'll have questions and instead of emailing me and saying, what did you want on number two or whatever, I will say, watch the video because I'm gonna talk you through it. First of all, you're gonna need to download the serial data set. And so I have that, I'm gonna bring it over so we can look at it for a second. This, um, anytime you're working with Excel, then you can look at the bottom where it says sheet and you can see <clears throat> you can switch from one sheet to another so um oops i don't mean to do that if i look down here you see where it says data serial data set and then over here you can look at another sheet so if uh, if you want to uh, you can put your answers in, into here and do the excel work that i'm going to describe in that second sheet and then uh, copy and paste it back into the document or you can really not use excel for much at all but just so you know, I do explain some things, how to do some things with Excel. Mainly, I want you to see that there's a bunch of different serials. There's 42, there's 41 serials. Number one is just the name. And marketed A and C means either adult or children. So what you're going to do is take all these serials and you're going to sort them into all the serials that are marketed to adults and all the serials that are marketed into children. And you're going to pick as a group two categories. So you might pick calories and carbohydrates. You might pick sodium and fat. You might pick protein and calories. That's up to you, but your group has to choose two categories, and then you're going to stick with those categories as you go through the project. So your group is going to pick two of the, all those. So not serving size, but any of these other ones you can pick, and you're going to use that for your data. So there's your data in the student data set and this is how you access it. Now what I'm gonna do is show you the actual project over here. And um, in this project, um, one of the first things I do is say, put your group members up here, use your first and last names because I, I've, I just don't wanna have to search through to find which Emily I'm talking about or whatever. So please use your first and last name there. Um, and then you decide which of the two columns you're gonna use and circle that or highlight it so that I know as soon as I see it, okay, I'm looking at carbohydrates and fat or whatever. And then down here where it says question marks, that's where you would put the two. Uh, so you might put, if you were doing calories and sodium, you put calories here and sodium there and then um, that's what you're going to be working with. And then over here, you would put calories and sodium. So you're labeling the columns to match what you had up here. So this first thing is when you sort the data after you, let's say you have calories up here and then you sort the data, all the ones that are adults and all the ones that are children, you're going to sort that. And then you're going to do the same thing for sodium, all the adult ones and all the children. You're going to come over and find all these values, max, min, uh, mean, median, all that stuff. You're going to find that for the adult values that were in your first column. And you're going to find it for all the adult column that was in your second column and so forth. Remember that variance is the standard deviation to the second power. There's no button in GeoGebra for that. So what you're going to do is find your standard deviation and then take that to the second power to get your variance. Um, so you might be saying like, whoa, how do I sort data? How do I, I don't remember how to find those values in GeoGebra. So up here is, is a video, how to sort your data using Excel. Uh, and find the measures of center and variation. For my, what I would suggest that you do is you use Excel to sort your data because it's a, it's kind of a nice uh, way to get that organized. And then use GeoGebra to find those measures of center and variation because those are easy. So remember that um, I have video showing you how to do all of this. So I just want to show you um, something um, I even have a video of like, okay, how do you get your, now that you've sorted it, how do you get that in there? So you can see that after I have sorted all the adult cereals, uh, this is for calories and all the uh, children's cereals for calories. Now I could copy and paste those and put them into my document. So I have not expected you to know how to do any of that. I have told you how to do it. So instead of emailing me and saying, I have no idea how to sort data, watch the video where I show you. 
I show you again how to find the measure of center and variation. I don't use your data, but I'm using some data. And then I even show you how to, once you get that sorted, how to copy and paste it in here. Of course, you can just type it in, but it's, it's kind of clunky that way. But I won't know the difference. So get your data set in here so I can see it here. And then you're going to find the class widths for your four sets of data. That is these four sets of data uh, and you're going to find your class width. And remember, the class width is the maximum value minus the minimum value. And that's why you found it up here. So you have that for your four sets. And then you divide by the number of classes. And I'm telling you to use five classes. So for all four of these, you're going to be dividing by five. Your maximum minus your minimum divided by five. And then remember the, the weird the thing about the class um, width that's different is that you always round up to the next highest value. So even if you got 3.1, if you were dealing with whole numbers for your data set, 3.1 would become four. Otherwise, you'll leave data out. So you want to come in here and show your work, which is just plugging into this formula and showing what you get, like 3.1, and then down here saying my class width is going to be four if that happened, right? So you always you always round up with that. And so over here, I also have the number of points you're going to get for each problem. It's kind of like your rubric of how you're going to earn credit for this. Then you're going to take that minimum value and that class width and go over here into GeoGebra and draw histograms for those four things. Label each graph clearly. Again, if you see I have a video there, it means how do I label it after I finish it in GeoGebra? How do I do that in GeoGebra? I have a video to show you. So what a lot of groups did and when they missed points was they like, oh yeah, I already know how to do a, a graph in GeoGebra. And so they went in and they did a graph in GeoGebra and they didn't watch my video for this project showing you exactly what I'm looking for or wanting, including the fact that your graph in GeoGebra for each of those graphs, you need to use that minimum value and the class width that you found in number two, and that's what it says, those found in number two. So use your class width found in two for each of your different graphs. Then you paste them in here and make sure that you label them first so I know which one is adult calories and which one is children calories and yada yada. So you do all that for number three. Um, and number four, it says choosing one of, of the two columns uh, your, group, your group chose. So you're going to use one count column. You're going to make two stacked, stacked bo box plots using GeoGebra. Again, I show you exactly how to do that. And all these videos that I put in here, I tried to make them two minutes or less. So it doesn't take a lot of time. Jump in and watch and make sure that you're getting what you're doing what I'm asking you to do. Um, and then, so you're going to compare it, uh, children to adults. So let's say that up here you chose um, calories, and so you have a column for calories for adult. Uh, whoops, you have the column for calories for adult and the column for children for adult. You're going to make a box plot out of the adult, and you're going to make a different box plot out of the children. And those two box plots are going to be stacked which GeoGebra does for you, and then you're going to paste that right in here. Make sure that you label them so I know which one refers to the adult and which one refers to the children's, and then put them in here. And then uh, we did this before, but you're going to find the fences for the two box plots that you found, and I put in the a reminder about how to find the upper and lower fence. Um, but I do also have a video of how to find the fences if you don't remember how to do that. And so you're going to find the, that for that. And notice I also, after you find the fence, say, are there any outliers? And what cereal do, do those points represent? So uh, if it's, you know, Frosted Flakes is the one that's the outlier, I want to know what actual cereal. And then based on the two box plots, do you think cereals marketed to children or adults are healthier? That's just those two box plots. And that, of course, is incomplete data to decide that on. But what I'm saying is, if you were just looking at those two box plots, which cereal do you think is healthier and why? So give me a little bit of not just children or adults, but actually why. Now, this is the one that people missed a lot. So pay attention on number seven. We're going to create a graph using multivariable analysis in GeoGebra. Again, if you don't know how to do that, watch the video. We're going to be comparing your two columns of data use the unsorted column. So now we're back to using the entire column for sodium and the or calories and the entire column for sodium, not the sorted, 
but the actual complete that uh, columns for this particular question. So read the date. People didn't do that, so make sure you read that. So you're going to use the entire column of the first thing you chose and the entire column of the second thing you chose, and you're going to follow the directions in this to make a graph, and then label it and give uh, you know give your label your axes so I know which is which, and then um, give it a name. And then looking at that graph, does that have a positive or negative correlation, and how do you know? And then um, number nine is the last one. So sometimes people say, oh, well, I did one through five, and they did six and seven, and she did eight and nine. So that's not how group projects are supposed to work, because you are getting a grade for all of it. So you should be looking at all of it. Somebody can take the lead on each of those. But for this one, it's a group discussion. So you have to have discussed it with your group. You can't just say, oh, I, look, I did this one. And so it's just all I looked at this and I thought this. This is where one person is going to write up a little summary, but everybody looks at it. This is the um, a couple of really quick little video um, studies about what what kind of cereals kids liked based on whether they had like a character involved with them or not. And then, um, then there's a list of 148 cereals ranked from least to most healthy. And so it asks you to look at the most healthy, which would be the ones at the very bottom of the list, and see how many include spokes characters. And then think about what the study showed you up above and just have a discussion about the marketing for breakfast cereals, um, what kind of cereal stands out in your mind from when you were a kid or even recently, or what you see your kids eating, or... Uh, do you think of cereal as healthy or convenient or both? And has the data in this project changed your mind about cereals? Those are prompts. You can also think of other things that you want to talk about or other things that struck you. And then you write, somebody writes um, a summary for your group. And your summary should be a paragraph. If it's one sentence or like, we liked it, we thought this is, you know, like, uh, put a little effort into it. It is a 10-point question. So... Put 10 points worth of effort into that. And that is the entire project. Um, I do have this project um, in, the, in the group oh, down here. You can access it via Google if you want to do that. And, sh and then um, make a copy as soon as you get in there. And that would be the copy that your group works on if uh, so make it easier to share uh, the ideas and work back and forth. So you can edit it right here and then uh, other people can see what you've done and you can share it that way. And there's a video also in here that shows you how to make it editable by anyone in your group. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, that's right there. So you may do that. You may also meet in person. You can get on Zoom and do it. Um, but um, and then it just so you can work on it how you want in your group. But remember this, because I just went through this with a few groups. Somebody just said, well, I just did all the work. Remember that it is a group project. If you do all the work, you're not working good in a group. It's not good to be the person who goes in and does everything ahead of time all by yourself. And then everybody else doesn't get that experience. That's not what you want. It's fine if you're just driven to do that. Go in and do it all, but then just have it. So when somebody else does a different part, you can check and go, yeah, that it looks like what I did. I mean, it's fine to check and do it yourself, but just to get it done and then say, I turned it in, I'm done with it, I'm turned it in. Um, that's really taking away from the group learning process. So this is not due until November 10th. So if you're turning it on the 7th and then saying, well, I just did it by myself, it's like, well, don't turn it in until it's due. And you can even see that you have until the 14th to get that in. So you have four days of extra time if you need it. You shouldn't feel rushed and don't rush your group members. They may be working. We don't know what they have going on, but obviously on the 14th, if they haven't participated, then you can say, okay, we got it done without them and maybe let me know that they didn't work on it or something. But try to work as a group. Um, it does not look good for me. You don't look good to me when you say I did it all myself because that means you're not co collaborating, right? So, all right, that's what I have to say. I hope that you watch this video. I think it's going to make you do better on the project and I hope you have a great day.